SVG has lost his crew chief, plus will Sam Mayer and Brandon Jones return to JRM in 2025 now that Connor Zilich has been signed? Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. I'm still trying to figure out a spot for our Canadian Lord and Savior, Lance Stroll, and where he belongs at in the office. I'll come up with a spot for him soon enough. But we did get some interesting news on Wednesday. Shane Van Gisbergen's crew chief, Bruce Schlicker, has left Call Racing effective immediately. Now, I've had this news for a little over a week now, but something fell off about the entire situation. On Wednesday, Toby Christie from tobychristie.com reached out to Call Racing, and they confirmed that Bruce has left the team, but they, out of respect for Bruce weren't going to give a reason as to why. So I hope everything is all right with Bruce, his family, whatever is happening over there. I wish the best for all of them. Um, you know, it's it's a weird situation. So now Shane Van Gisbergen is without a crew chief. Well, he does have Kevin Walter moving over from the 11 car, and now he's going to have to create a rapport with Kevin Walter, who um, was on the 11 car of Josh Williams. Now, as we know, Shane Van Gisbergen and Bruce Schlicker had combined for three extended series wins this season on road courses, have been absolute menace on the road courses. They're untouchable. AJ Allmendinger is in the back going, I wish I could be SVG when I grew up. I love AJ. He's a heck of a road course but Shane has just been absolutely waxing everybody this season. And now he's sitting in a really good spot as he heads into his first NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. He's got a good chance to transfer out of the first round too, just based off the playoff points that he has. So to lose his crew chief and Bruce Schlicker right now is a pretty big blow for, for him, especially with the guy that he has worked with all season and has created a pretty good, like I said, rapport with him. Now he's going to have to try to create that with Kevin Walter as well. And Kevin's a great, great crew chief has in his own right. Bruce Schlicker, uh, uh, as an Xfinity Series crew chief, does have 10 career wins. He won five with um, five with AJ Allmendinger. He took Jeff Burton to victory lane. He took Chandler Smith to victory lane. He's taken SVG to victory lane now. He has one uh, race as a crew chief in the Cup Series. He took Chandler Smith to a P11 finish as well. By all accounts, a really solid crew chief. So I hope the best for Bruce and whatever his next endeavor is inside racing, outside of racing. Doesn't matter. Wish the best to him. For SVG, though, he is going to have to come out at Michigan in the next Xfinity Series race and, you know, create a new... He's got a new voice in his head. He's got Kevin Walter in his head now, and he's going to have to learn the ins, ins and outs of working with him the same way that Kevin's going to have to learn how SVG operates at that. And I guess in a, in a roundabout way, it might be a little bit easier because at some of these racetracks, SVG doesn't know what he doesn't know. He's never been to Michigan before. So it's not like he has a preconceived idea on how the car is supposed to handle here other than what he's had on, on the sim before. So in a weird way, it actually might be not as detrimental as you might expect. Yes, it's going to be different because I think Bruce probably has a good idea on what Shane was looking for out of a race car. And now Kevin's going to have to work on understanding that. But for the most part, Shane is still in his first ever Xfinity Series season. So like I said, he doesn't know what he doesn't know at this point. So Kevin can kind of steer him in the direction that he thinks the car is going to be fastest and Shane can adapt to that and then kind of build build off of off of whatever the baseline is there. So I don't think it's as big of a blow as you know it would have been if he was you know years into his NASCAR career at this point, but it certainly is not an ideal situation for for him. So SUG will have a new crew chief heading into the next Xfinity Series race. They, of course, are not racing this weekend at Richmond. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Once again, use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have a new Bra or Driven shirt on. I almost said BREAKHARD shirt. No, this is a Driven shirt. Use code BREAKHARD. Uh, I wear the sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears the sunglasses. Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, and maybe you can as well. So check out their website today. Moving on to some other news in the Xfinity series. Obviously, on Tuesday night, we talked about Connor Zilich being the driver of the number 88 car for Junior Motorsports in 2025. And then that news was confirmed on Wednesday morning when the Dale Jr. download dropped. And they apparently have just 17 different, you know, graphics of Connor Zilich and that number 88 logo because they have been plastered everywhere from track house to Chevy to JRM multiple times on JRM. Connor's provide it's just an abundance of Connor Zilich graphics announcing that he's going to the 88, which is awesome for him. Obviously, Trackhouse didn't want to do a deal with Colleague again. The Colleague 2025 Xfinity Series lineup does appear to be a bit full right now, um, at least based off of what I've heard. So they decided to do a partnership with Junior Motorsports. He is on loan from Trackhouse to JRM. JRM will field the cars. Trackhouse will find the sponsorship and the funding and everything to for Connor to continue on in that 88 car. Sounds like everything is pretty much already wrapped up on that side. But a lot of people on the internet were like, so is JRM going to run five cars? Well, 
pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah, they can run five cards if they'd like. There's no limit in the Xfinity series like there is a Cup series. So if they wanted to, they could. But there might be some other things happening over at Junior Motorsports. Bob Hawkers on Tuesday morning said that his expected Xfinity series lineup right now for JRM is to have Justin Allgaier in the seven, Sammy Smith in the eight, and Connor Zilich in the 88. What happens with the other cars is still TBD. So I reached out as well on Wednesday to kind of find out what's happening there. And I expect Sam Mayer to depart Junior Motorsports at the end of the season. It does not sound like he will be back with JRM next year. He, however, is not going to the Cup Series uh, based off of what I heard. He will be with another Xfinity Series team. Who that is, I'm still working hard to find that out for, for everybody here. And once I do find out and confirm it, I'll let everybody know at this point. But Sam Mayer, not expected to return to JRM in 2025. Now, what about Brandon Jones? He was not mentioned by Bob Hawkers. I asked about Brandon Jones as well, and there was a little bit more iffy on Brandon Jones. It seems like he could come back or he might not come back. There's no definitive yes, he is, or no, he's not at this point. But I would maybe lean towards yes, he is. So they will potentially still have a four-car team over there between the 7, 8, 9, and 88. They, of course, could still field a fifth car for Carson Quapple, which is a guy that a lot of people are massively high on. I am as well. He's in my top 10 prospects list. I think that kid is ultra-talented. He has an average finish of like eighth place right now in his select Xfinity Series starts this year. Should have won Dover earlier in the year. Continually impresses and improves every time he gets into one of these Xfinity Series cars. Still has a few races left to go on his schedule this year as well. While he continues to race in the cars tour. I think that kid is massively talented. He's the next Josh Berry. He's the next project for junior motorsports. And I think they will find the funding for him should they need to find funding, which they absolutely will have to do. So it does sound like Sam is out. Brandon may be coming back. And then what happens? Do they run five full-time cars? Do they not? Obviously with the 88, you know, and Connor Zillage, that car is funded. That car is not a is not a car that JRM is going to have to worry about finding sponsorship for. That is Trackhouse's um, role. They are going to find the funding for Connor Zilich in the 88 car. Uh, like Adam Stern reported in the Sports Business Journal, WeatherTech is expected to be a major partner uh, with Connor in the Xfinity series and moving over from SVG's Xfinity ride to the 88 next year. SVG, like we talked about before, expected to move up to the Cup series next year. So for JRM, there's a lot of things that could be in play here. And Xfinity Series Silly Season is starting to kick off. It typically has a much later start than Cup Series Silly Season does. Uh, I mean, heck, there's going to be probably some decent Xfinity Series rides that we're still wondering about the lineup or the gr driver of by, you know, we're going to might be into January by that point. So we got a long way to go for truck and Xfinity Series Silly Season. But there have been some moves that are being made, announcements that will be upcoming within you know, the next month, I'll say that just to kind of be safe here. But Colleagues Xfinity Series lineup sounds pretty stout for 2025 based off of what I've heard. The JRM lineup, again, adding Connor Zilich is a really big step up right there. We continue to hear a multiple multitude of different things. Multitude? Whatever. We hear, <laughs> we continue to hear a bunch of different things about the Haas Factory Xfinity Series lineup. Will Haley Deegan join it? Is that a place for Ryan Priest? Is Harrison Burton potentially going there? Riley Herbst said that he's keeping all of his options open, but he is not returning to the Haas Factory team in 2025. Um, you know, I think there's a number of different drivers that are interested in landing over at there. And then what happens with the Joe Gibbs racing lineup? Of course, Ryan Truex and others are running partial schedules this year. Does Sheldon Creed return or does Sheldon Creed head over to Haas factory team? He has been rumored to have had talks with them. Haven't confirmed that, but uh, he has, his name has popped up in that circle uh, of potential drivers to head over to Haas factory. If he leaves JGR, who do they get to fill into that seat for him? Not going to be Corey Heim by the sounds of it. He and Joe Gibbs Racing don't appear to ever be headed towards a partnership, but things could change, of course. There's different things that could go on here. But yeah, Xfinity Series Silly Season, Truck Series Silly Season is about to ramp up into full gear as we head into the final, I don't know, what do you want to consider it? The final quarter of the season or so, if you will, the final 10 races of the year. Things are going to start moving on a, a little bit more. Companies are going to want to get their marketing budgets more in order as we head towards Q4. So yeah, there's a lot of things moving right now, but that is where we stand currently. So let me know in the comments what you think about SCG's crew chief leaving and Sam Mayer leaving JRM plus other possible people that could end up over there. So like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.